Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, setup, setup and uh, installation video for the Panasonic KX MB1500 and 1520 black and white uh, MFP from Panasonic. Um, the, the, we're ready to go. It's asking us to select our language. All right, the easy installation is what we're going to do, but if uh, just so, so that we can see everything that's on the um, screen on the CD, let's see what the custom installation looks like. Well, it's pretty sleepy. The computer's pretty sleepy here. Come on. All right, it's starting up the multifunction software set station set up all right it's uh, given us a welcome screen uh, end user license uh, if you agree or not uh, it's asking you what folder you want to send it in us uh, it's install it in I'll keep the default uh, it's, now it's asking us again about the um, installation custom standard but you know what we need to go back and look at the rest of the stuff that's on the um, disk okay so uh, we have easy easy installation custom installation um, this allows you to go back if you in the custom installation you say I don't want to put something on there and then discover that you need it afterwards you pop in the CD and you can modify what you have installed uh, tools um, configure your your Windows firewall uh, clean up your registry uh, that's pretty nice if you're having trouble uh, uninstalling or installing and um, allows you uh, to update the software to a newer version so that means we're going to have probably have to go back and double check this uh, or maybe it'll happen dynamically in the uh, installation process itself uh, operating instructions um, I just clicked it uh, we have a right now oh my goodness um, I we're doing a 1520 and then all of these letters stand for different languages I assume that the um, 1520 without any suffix is for in, for uh, this machine and then English and we're gonna. This is gonna have, let us install the user guide. Okay. Oh, I like that file location. No qualms about that. Now the no, as you saw in the video before, no manual comes with it. So, in order to get the uh, the full version of the manual, you need to go through this this process. And. Um, the bar is not moving even though we're basically installing a PDF on this computer we pretty much flashed by and it sat there at the beginning for a minute but it flashed by so we'll finish that <clears throat> installation hints Okay, so here's your installation hints. Disconnect the USB cable if you've connected it. Put the CD-ROM in. Once it um, prompts you, 
to connect it, you connect as USB. So, not a lot of hints, but not a bad thing either. So it's 1227. Let's go with the easy at the PM. Let's go with the easy installation. That should install everything. Oops, bar just went backwards. Come on, you can do it. So here's the end, licensed, end user license agreement again. Yes, if you click no, you can't install the software. You can thank the U.S. legal beagles for having a deal with something like that every time you install software. Or the Sue Happy citizenry, one, one or the other. I don't know whether the legal beagles enabled that or well what, but I know that in, in um, other countries they just you know if the software doesn't install right, they're not calling their lawyer, and other countries have far few lawyers per capita than we do. So, okay, information for USB Connect. If you connect a cable, the following message may appear, but you can continue the installation with no no problem. Please click the following button. And um, and we'll see what happens. It doesn't say anything about doesn't say anything about um, installing a cable at this point. It just tells you if you have trouble, click here, and then it says after we accept above contents, please check the following OK box and click next. Now, what is the purpose of this? Well, you have to verify that you read this message. I guess it is another step that Panasonic has to take to somebody who screws up in a USB installation and tries to sue them. We all have to read that. Instead of clicking the thing when it comes up, we have to be warned and then verify that we read it in order to continue the installation. Well, Panasonic is not prone to hysteria, so there must be a re good reason for that. No, well, maybe not a good reason, but a compelling reason. Okay, here's here's the box that um, I believe, unless when my memory serves me right, that they wanted us to. Well, maybe not. Would you like to install this software? I mean, we've gotten this far and we've answered a couple questions and verified that we're not going to sue them and all that. I, install it. I believe that last message was a Windows standard. I'm going to change your registry. Uh, Windows is nervous, so please check this this box to allow me to make changes to your system. And this little box, in case you can't read it, says configuring system I.O. System input slash output. And, you know, I always complain about having to watch a slideshow, but at this point, I may even welcome seeing happy mommies and children printing out their homework and and dad on the phone talking to his stockbroker pictures instead of this little nondescript box. At least you know something's going on when the pit where you think something's going on when there's a slideshow of happy people going on. But the drive light is flickering over here. You can't see it, but I'm certainly staring at it. I always wish that 
when the CD is working that there was an hourglass or something going on because you know it happens all the time when you copy in files or all kinds of other things but whenever you do anything from the CD and, and, and during these installations you don't have any indication that anything's going on unless you look at the drive light and when the drive light stops you wonder whether the whole thing stops so it'd be nice if these ins uh, when you do a s installation and you would have some little uh, at least the hourglass would be tumbling around to kind of give you an idea that it's still going on uh, not all s installations you know get to leave you clueless but too many of them do. We're coming down the stretch here. Uh, installing device monitor. That's going to be something you, you can run down here to keep an eye on what's going on. And most likely it also includes the, um, the software that lets you um, push scan jobs to the PC. We'll find out um, in the software overview. I hope it doesn't be too long. Now it's installing the multifunction station drivers. And here we go. I want, now it's asking us whether we want to install the operating instructions. And since I'm such a smartass, I installed it before and um, jumped a gun. Uh, that other option is if you want to install it on, you know, on another workstation and not the software. So no, I don't want to install the operating instructions. We already did that, and it it's, it seemed painfully long. It's already been recorded. Okay, and now it's um, multifunction station is is configuring you uh, you know our new software installation yet again okay the device monitor has been installed and it's configuring the system IO again okay we uh, just got the connect device finally on the screen ten minutes into the process and a lot of looking at nothing on the screen and I'm um, attempting to plug in the USB. I mean, it's a rectangular plug, but for some reason I have to be looking right at the port in order to get it in there, right? I mean, I never, I can never understand how a plug that can only go in two ways is so hard to put in. Maybe it's just me. Well, please wait. This little green ball is circling a picture of a computer down here, which means that the USB drivers are being installed. So at least we know something's going on over here. And once this says it's done, this should go away. <clears throat> Okay, I just heard a beep, so I have a feeling we're getting there. Or I hope we're getting there. Okay, after two minutes of watching that green ball float around, device is ready to use, and the dialogue went away. So, I plugged in the cable already. Next. Now it's configuring the system I.O. yet again. Now that the cable's connected. I know I sound cynical, but you have to understand I've probably sat through more of these than anybody on the planet. 
Oops. Okay. I mean, there's people who do this for a living, but for one vendor, I mean, I look out to look at everybody's stuff. I'm going to get a name of the printer, that's fine. The name of the PC fax, that's fine. The name of the scanner, that's fine. I don't know why I'd want to change it. Install. And multifunction station driver software is configuring your new software installation. Now it's installing the Easy Print Utility. It's nice how it says, uh, and polite, please wait, should say, please go get a cup of coffee. Or automatically look at the clock and, and say, it's afternoon time, please go get a beer. Or take a few minutes to have dinner. Oh, it's telling, it's giving us a warning here that it's take more than, may take more than 10 minutes. That's enough for a couple cups of coffee or a 40-ouncer. Wow, I was getting depressed. I was figuring I was going to have to sit here for... 10 minutes and um, it flashed by and probably took two minutes and um, that makes me feel good so now it wants us to restart the computer okay it's 1255 so we started at 1227 so that's what uh, 28 minutes so far uh, and you know we can deduct a, a little bit of time for the uh, Windows boot up. This is Windows 7 Professional, and not much running down here. But so belay that. We can deduct a minute or two for my prolist prolistizing, and we can delete a minute or two for um, the um, recording software, which uh, interferes every now and then. So 28 minutes. Uh, you know, you're looking at probably 24 minutes yourself, so let's check out the... Uh